by the 1960s in the United States, the public began to understand that we had to have national programs of environmental protection because there was too much pollution, there was killing of endangered species, we were harvesting too many fishes in the sea, and we were damaging the beaches. And those things needed to be corrected. That was about 1965 that all started. And, and then you uh, got involved more and more. Could you tell about that? Yes, I uh, got so involved in it that I basically had to stop doing my research and start working on conservation programs for the whole of the United States. I was in Washington, D.C., and I helped write legislation that would prevent damage to the coastal environment from pollution and from development and the um, and wetlands destruction and the wastage of beaches. So it was a kind of find those special precious habitats that the marine life needs and then protect them. The whole coastal zone management effort uh, started in the United States in 1965 with a particular problem of marshland wetlands in Long Island, New York. And then it spread from there to the whole of New York State and it spread from there to the whole of the United States and pretty soon, by 1972, President Nixon had signed an act in Congress that there would be a program for the United States to protect coastal resources all around, all of the coasts of the United States. And how should that be done? What, what was the new thing in, in the thinking? Well, it was set up so that each state would get federal grants, there would be some money coming from the federal government from Washington, D.C., to each of the coastal states so they could set up a conservation program for the coastal area. But each state had its own independence so that in every one of the 30 states that participated, there was a different theme. In New Jersey, it was strictly into regulation of development. In Florida, it was strictly into education and projects to help people in local cities and counties. This uh, coastal zone management idea that the United States started in 1972 quickly spread to many other countries so that Sri Lanka and the Philippines and many other countries started to establish coastal zone management programs where they would find put a central agency in charge of all the things that can affect coastal environments and their resources, fisheries, etc. Some of the most important habitats that have to be protected through coastal zone management include the coral reefs of the world. It includes, as I mentioned, the beaches, all the wetlands, mangrove forests and marshlands which are very important for the survival of all marine species. Those are the most important, but sometimes even sandbars are important for their ecological role that they have in uh, providing storage for nutrient and then supplying it to the shrimps and the fishes and the crabs and so forth. So there are many, many elements of the habitat. And of course, water pollution is critical so that the water that flows around and over all these habitats is also protected from pollution. Everything from nuclear pollution to the pollution that comes from people's toilets. I think people understand and desire to have this kind of management much more than the bureaucracies in these countries. The biggest problem is to try to coordinate and integrate all the different agencies like shipping, defense, um, land use management, um, transportation, uh, and utilities development, 
and all these different functions to try to coordinate what they do is very difficult because all these agencies are very selfish. They just want to do what they want to do and it's sometimes very difficult to coordinate their activities and put in place a superpower that will tell all these agencies what they must do in the interest of saving habitats, protecting marine species, even like turtles that are endangered on almost all the world, but the big fisheries included and also the recreation benefits, clear, clean water, clean beaches, all this. It has to be integrated together because no one agency in any country has the power to do this. There has to be a superpower created. I would say that uh, for coastal zone management success around the world, there are very few countries who have adopted a complete comprehensive program with a super agency to control it. But hundreds of countries have, or at least a hundred countries, have found the use of this program for regional management or subject management where some of the integration some of the comprehensive part of it is taken up and utilized very effectively even if the whole country is an other one superpower for coastal management the agencies in various countries do not want some other agency to tell them what to do. That's the only complication that exists. The idea of establishing programs to control land use, of pollution, of saving coral reefs, of managing fisheries, this is all very simple stuff, okay? And the only problem is that the land use agency, the fisheries agency, the pollution agency, etc. They don't want to work together. So what, what would you do then? That's, that, that's, that's how the real world is. That's the way the real world works. It works that way, where each agency has its own territory and it wants to have its own powers. It doesn't want to be interfered with. And it takes a very strong central government to tell these agencies, like the transportation department, okay, you are going to have to do an environmental impact statement on that railroad or that highway or whatever you're doing because we have to make sure that it's environmentally sound. We are used to crisis management where uh, the governments and the people and particularly business leaders tend to resist environmental management until the crisis comes, all right? Until the water at the beach is so badly polluted that all the tourists that come get sick, or until a whole fishery collapses and you have 5,000 fishermen out of work, that kind of thing. It takes almost takes a crisis to get the governments to say, okay, we will do this because it is the right thing to do. The influence of coastal zone management efforts is seen in a hundred countries that have made efforts to reduce pollution, protect beaches, save marine habitats, manage the species, save endangered species. All those effects have happened because of coastal zone management and the education benefits from it, even without this comprehensive or integrated approach that we favor, there are benefits all over the world in conserving marine resources and in limiting developments that are damaging. Oil refineries, uh, for instance, are huge condominium developments that destroy beaches, etc. The subject of global warming, with all of its consequences, 
and its effects on the sea and on the level of the sea and the sea rising. All of that is such a huge topic of controversy among all the countries of the world that it's almost impossible for coastal zone management independently to act on managing the uh, carbon dioxide and the other gases, the fluorocarbons that affect the, uh, green, the that cause the greenhouse effect. But coastal zone management must support every effort in order to reduce those gases that are beginning to surround the Earth and causing the Earth's envelope to heat. I think it's uh, that in the future of coastal zone management, it's a step-by-step -step process. One country takes it up and succeeds. Sri Lanka succeeds. The Philippines succeed. Mexico succeeds somewhat. It's a step-by-step -step process, and as different countries succeed in this mission to protect the ocean, the coastal part of the ocean, from all these effects, as, as different countries get into coastal zone management, set up effective programs, other countries will respond and do the same thing. This is fascination, the sea.